Hello, cheapskaters. My name is Kath Armstrong, and I'm the creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up, and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. We're two and a half weeks away from Christmas. Mortgage interest rates have just gone up again, eighth time this year. Prices are rising every day and it's feeling like life is tough. I get it. I've been in the situation of having to live on no income for a very long time. But cheapskaters, there are some simple changes you can make to your day-to-day -day life that will make an enormous difference to your cost of living and they will, well, they're just going to help you beat inflation. Now, the first thing you can do is a favourite of mine, and I know you may not like it, but it has to be done. Track your spending. It's old-fashioned. Everyone was doing it, you know, 20 years ago. We should still be doing it today because if you don't know where the money is going, how are you ever going to control it? You may know that you buy groceries and fuel and pay for music lessons and tuck shop. But do you know, do you remember all the other things your money goes on? You may well be able to remember the big things like the mortgage and the credit card repayment, but don't rely solely on your memory for all the other spends. I know mine's not that good and I have been tracking my spending forever. Look, I don't care if you write your spends in a notebook or keep track on your phone or your tablet, but you need to track your spending. Get into the habit of updating your tracker every day, perhaps after dinner while you're watching TV or just before you go to bed. If you travel on the train to and from work, you could perhaps do it then. It doesn't really matter when, as long as you do. Because if you don't know what you've spent, how can you ever really know where all that money has gone? And how will you know if it has just been frittered away or if you've used it wisely? And that leads into point number two. Get your finances organised. You can't live beneath your means if you don't have organised finances. Now, I'm going to plug the 2023 saving revolution here. If you've never done a saving revolution before, please click on the link below to find out what it's all about and seriously consider joining us. Now, it's a big, a big challenge. It's a year-long program that will not only get your finances in order, but it'll get you on the path to being debt-free, cashed up and laughing. And isn't that our goal? It's open to all Cheapskates Club members, but you do need to be an active member and you do need to register before 5 p.m. on the 31st of December 2022. So you've only got a couple of weeks. I'm really tough and I don't accept late registrations under any circumstances. Anyway, better get back to getting your finances organised. Track your spending. Keep your budget up to date. Now set a time to do this every week. Plan for the future expenses that are going to come your way. Take control of your money and you can learn to live beneath your means by living by the 10, 10, 80 rule and that's simply save 10%, give 10%, live off the remaining 80% of your income. And that leads into what is a no-brainer but is something that so many people, not just Australians, but so many people seem to struggle with, especially in the Western world. Never spend more than you make. It's not rocket surgery, folks. As long as you are spending less than you make, you will never be in debt. So track your spending, live to your budget. That's the 80 part of the 10, 10, 80 rule. You're living beneath your means. Get into the habit of living on less. And it's a habit anyone can develop. And you have financial security. Now, for the saving part of the 10, 10, 80 rule, have a goal. We all know that goals work. They give us something to aim for, to work towards. It's a reward for our efforts. 
So choose a financial goal that will motivate you and work towards it. Now, it could be paying off the car. It could be going on a really glamorous holiday. It could be getting a whole house full of new furniture. It doesn't have to be a huge financial goal. Just make one. Make a goal and work for something that you really want. You'll stay focused on the reward because it's something you really want and you'll be motivated to reach your goal because it's something you really want and you know that you will own it at the end. Well, so far, these five strategies have all been money-focused and they should be because we're talking about our financial life. But the next strategy is an old-fashioned one, and it works. Old-fashioned is not necessarily bad. And it is simply shop once a week and only once a week. Stay away from the shops on the other six days of the week and see how much money you can actually keep in your bank account. Now, I shop on a Wednesday. I do the supermarket with my list, then I hit the green grocer with the list. If we need meat, I'll head to the butcher with the list. While I'm out, I'll go to the post office, the chemist if I need anything, op shop if I need something, anywhere else I need to go, and I combine the trips into one. I hate driving all over the place every day. It uses up fuel, and fuel is so expensive, so we don't want to do that. And it's just much easier and more efficient and much more economical to group all your chores together and do them in one trip. So if you're in the habit of stopping at the supermarket every day on the way home from work or after you pick the kids up from school, stop. Break that habit. Shopping is not a recreational activity. It's a chore. Treat it like one. Make your shopping list and head off once a week. If you forget something, it's not going to matter, is it? It'll wait until next week. And as it's going to be first on the list for next week, you won't forget it again. Now, trust me when I say you'll save money, but you are going to save so much time and so much energy. Shopping is exhausting. And you'll get into the habit of meal planning and using up what you have too. So less waste is less money wasted, more money kept. Now, lastly, strategy number seven is one we've talked about before. Have a no spend day. One day where you don't spend any money, whether it's cash or card or online shopping, e-commerce, just pick a day and don't spend any money at all. This gives you a chance to relax and, and not worry about the spending and, and whether you're overspending or underspending and not worry about your finances for 24 hours. And that's a really good thing. Because while we always need and should be aware of our financial situation, being able to shelve it for 24 hours, well, that stops the constant 24-7 stress and, and that can lead to possible budget burnout. We don't want that. So there you have it, seven easy and simple ways you can live believe, um, below your means and beat inflation. Anyone can do them. Now, before I go, thank you so much for watching all the way through. Feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to know if you have other ways to live below your means. I read every comment and I do my best to answer any questions that you may have. So go right ahead and let, have a chat with me. If you know someone who might like this video, please click that share button to send them the link. There are three simple things you can do that will help us. Like, subscribe and share. They help our channel to grow and be recognised more easily. And the easier it is to find us, the easier it is for us to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, but it is still absolutely possible and can still be done even in today's crazy world. I'll be back with another Cheapskates Club video showing you how to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing very soon. But until then, happy cheapskating everyone.